Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at what the water companies do to turn water like this which is from our school ponds into water like this which is potable water which means it's drinkable water and this has come straight from the tap. So what makes this potable water which means it's drinkable water is it's got low levels of microbes like bacteria, it's got low levels of dissolved chemicals in the water and it's also got a nearly neutral pH. But we must remember it's not pure water. Pure water will just be H2O, water molecules and nothing else. Whereas this tap water will have things like chlorine in there, maybe a little bit of calcium as well. So although it's potable, drinkable water, it isn't pure water. In many countries like Britain, the water companies go to places like lakes, rivers, reservoirs, ponds, to get the water that is then treated and that is then turned into our tap water. So if we think about our school pond water, we can see that there's insoluble substances like the dirt and the pebbles at the bottom and the sand. It's also got larger items like leaves in there and it's also got some dissolved chemicals that we can't necessarily see. And not to mention, of course, there will be microbes in there like bacteria and possibly some viruses. So we need to drastically reduce the amount of those substances in the water in order to turn it from that into this. And that involves many stages that the water companies do to treat our water. So the first thing that the water companies have to do when they're treating the water like this water is they have to pass it through big screens. And they're like big sieves to get rid of the large items like the twigs and the branches and the leaves, things like that. And then the second part of the process in cleaning up the water is filtering it. Now they can't just bring out some giant filter paper like we would use in science. They wouldn't be one big enough to filter all the water that's needed every day by everybody in Britain. So instead they use sand like I've got here as a filter. So I've got this filter funnel filled with sand. I've got a tiny bit of cotton wool just making sure it all doesn't fall through. And I'm going to pour my pond water into the sand and we're going to come back to that in a few minutes to check what the water looks like after it's passed through all those layers of sand. The idea is that it should filter the water and it should look a lot better coming out than it did going in from our pond water. So let's see how effective the filtering was on the pond water. So the pond water looked something like this and the filtered water does look a lot better but we can still see that we wouldn't be happy drinking this water after it's passed through the sand filter. So that's because it's still got that brown colour from dissolved substances in the water and there might also be some very fine insoluble particles still. So the next stage for the water companies would be to let the water settle so that even the finest particles settle out and they also add chemicals to help those fine particles stick together in lumps and then they will settle out. So there's that settlement process next. After they've done that, they would then add some chlorine to kill the bacteria. In your exam, make sure you're saying it kills the bacteria, not that it gets rid of the bacteria. The bacteria would still be in there, but they would be dead, so they wouldn't be able to harm you. So chlorine is added to kill the bacteria. They could also do that with ozone, which is a special type of oxygen, or they could do it with ultraviolet light. So there's some sterilization process going on. And then the last stage for the water companies would be to check the pH of the water and adjust it if necessary to make sure the pH is around pH 7. So water sources like this pond water is what's classed as fresh water. And the water companies in Britain go to freshwater supplies like rivers, lakes, reservoirs and even some underground water in rocks called aquifers. And that's called fresh water because it's got low levels of dissolved salts in the water compared to something like seawater which is much more difficult to turn into drinking water. So now we're going to have a look at how you can turn seawater that's got much higher levels of salt in it into potable water that is safe to drink. This is the first method that can be used to clean up seawater which has got high levels of salt and make it perfectly safe to drink. 
and this is simple distillation. So I'll show you in here in a moment, but in here I've got a flask of the pond water and that's been heated up by this electric heater. The water of the pond water will evaporate and turn into water vapour and pass up here and hit this cold tube called a condenser. This is a Liebig condenser. It's got water flowing around the outside of it to keep it nice and cold. So as we're heating up the pond water, the water vapour passes up this tube here, it hits the cold condenser and the water vapour will turn back into water and we'll actually get pure water out here because it will just be the water and nothing else. Everything else in the pond water will have been left behind in the flask. We can now see the pond water bubbling away in the flask so we can be quite sure that's now turning into water vapour in that flask and leaving behind everything else that's in that pond water. Let's have a look at the water that we've collected from this distillation. So the water certainly looks nice and clean but we'd have to do further tests to check that it was clean water. In fact this should be pure water in this case. Now the problem is that's not an awful lot of water to collect after having the heater going for a good 15 minutes. So one of the main disadvantages of using distillation to clean up the water is that it takes an awful lot of energy. So the countries that tend to use this are ones where they haven't got fresh water supplies to draw on. So it might be that country's in the middle of a desert like Saudi Arabia or Qatar. So they haven't got the lakes and the rivers so they have to then use seawater which has these high levels of salt. And the other thing about those countries is they are oil rich countries so they do have a lot of energy that they can use for um, making the water potable. The second way of making seawater drinkable or potable is something called reverse osmosis. And you're all familiar from biology with what osmosis is. So in biology, you know that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a high concentration of water molecules to an area where there's a lower concentration of water molecules. So in this diagram, if it was a biological process, we'd have water molecules moving from the right hand side of the semi-permeable membrane to the left hand side going from a high to a low concentration of water molecules. However, reverse osmosis, as the name suggests, is the opposite. So we use high pressure to press those water molecules on the left-hand side through that semi-permeable membrane. So in this case, reverse osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a low concentration of water to an area of high concentration of water molecules. And as we can see, the water molecules are able to go through the semi-permeable membrane, but the salt water molecules aren't. So what we're doing there is we're extracting water molecules from the salt water by using that pressure. The high pressure is what forces the molecules through the membrane. And because we're using high pressure, it also uses a lot of energy, just like distillation does. And both of those processes, reverse osmosis and distillation, are known as desalination processes. And that means taking the salt out of the water. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, check out the description in the video description and you'll see there some very useful revision resources that I've recommended. Thank you for watching.